so I got managed to get his email from another biologist and then sending him lots of emails saying this is the idea this is the project this is what we've done before we would love to come out and and and, and do a multi-year filming of photography and writing about this subject and he found, so we basically had myself jamie barnes we had a, the the chap a, a french quebec guy called martin who i canoed the yukon with we had all three of us locked in flights booked this whole thing ready to go and the the concept that i had was to paddle with a, a fourth person who was either a native person from um the ojibwe who lived in that area mm -hmm. or a biologist who was a moose biologist and then i came to the idea of maybe the biologist would might have been the best sort of the, the best idea at that point for the canoeing and Seth had canoed before he knew the landscape that we were going into he was a kind of the person that was going to on the trip in tell us about the environment of the moose where the moose was and and be this anchor for the whole story for the actual canoe section that we did in southern Ontario a month before the trip actually it was due to start we had no one other than us three um, and then luckily Seth came through we had a zoom call and he agreed to do it mm -hmm. so then we all flew out to southern Ontario um, in late August going into September and we paddled across a, a, a massive swath of national park in southern Ontario that kind of just yeah. north of the border to Minnesota where this actual issue is taking place um, and we yeah we spent 10 days canoeing and then we once we finished canoeing we then went down into um the us and went into the grand portage uh, area so we went into the reservation mm -hmm. and interviewed a few people there some people sort of the actual native biologists that are associated with the band to give you some context seth is actually employed by the government who's then almost subcontracted into the the actual tribe itself to find out what the hell is going on and to sustain the moose or, or bring the moose numbers up so that the band can con continue their subsistence hunting so there was this beautiful environmental story cultural story that really anchored in the middle and yeah we're still learning now after one and a half years down the line yeah. we're still learning this is a multi like you say it's a multi-year project isn't it yeah, so and still, years. yeah and so part of, so yeah you've touched on so environmental as adventure and, and and that stuff that goes that comes with that naturally but i think the point is that the ancestral right to hunt isn't it but the yeah but the moose numbers are declining significantly and i think if i recall warmer climates resulting in deer traveling further north wolves following them eating not just the deer but the moose calves and and stuff and, the, and therefore the, nice. the numbers were declining but you i think when you mentioned ticks earlier, I'm sure you said something, I think in, in the article that they're dying of the tick infestation and disease as well. Yeah, yeah that's correct. So there's, there's this meeting point of all of these factors that mm -hmm. are causing the moose to decline. Um, the ticks is one, the winter ticks, 